Preventing wildfires. That's all Smokey wants for his 70th birthday. We'll want to remember this night forever. Let's make sure it's not for the wrong reasons. If you're underage, just drinking is a crime, and drinking and driving is a whole lot worse. Right now, Arkansas law enforcement is out all over the state with extra sobriety checkpoints for people of all ages, anytime, anywhere. Don't end the big night or any night in here. Underage drinking. Zero tolerance. Hi, this day is Amy Gillespie from the Bentonville Public School Citizens for Equality. How are you today? I'm doing well. How are you? Pretty good. Now, you've had a, I guess your group's had a busy few months, hasn't it? Yes, we have. We have been busy since, oh, about mid-April when all of this sort of blew up in the Bentonville Public School District, and we have been at every single school board meeting since that time. Yeah. Now, what exactly, what exactly is the Bentonville Public School Citizens for Equality? We're a Facebook group. We are just a grassroots group of citizens who are very concerned about what's going on in um, the Bentonville Public School yeah. District uh, with regards to equality for their employees and um, kind of keeping an eye on the school board and some of the school board members and finding out what's really going on there and um, trying to hold them accountable and um, try to get them to in add inclusive language to their equal opportunity policy. It seems perhaps that some of the school board members are not so concerned with equality. Uh, no, there's at least two that are very, very vocal against it. Uh, do you think they understand that they're on the wrong side of history? Um, that's certainly my opinion. I don't believe that it's theirs. Uh, yeah, yeah. Now, uh, recently your group had a petition, did they? We did. We, um, when we formed the group, there were a few things that we wanted to do to get started. First, we wanted to organize mm -hmm. um, and get all of those people who support equality together and let them know this was going on and start vocalizing that. And one right. of the ways we did that was to start a change.org petition, uh, which when we submitted it um, a few weeks ago had 450 signatures on it. Wow, now, that. now who did you submit that to? The Bentonville School Board? Yes, the entire school board and the superintendent. Mr. So Ford. what was their reaction when you turned it in? Um, I did not receive any formal reaction from that. That's about par for the course. Uh, <laughs> so like, what, what, what can you tell me about the Bentonville School Board's actions over the last few months, though? <sighs> okay, to, from the beginning, um, back in April, right. Grant Lytle proposed um, asking the superintendent to look into language for the non-discrimination equal employment opportunity policy. Right. Um, tell him, you know, we, our policy currently is not up to par with the University of Arkansas's policy. It's yeah. not the same as Walmart's policy. Right. Let's take a look at that, look into some of what the other school districts are doing and see if we can start bringing in some of those ideas because yeah. the time has come. Exactly. And so he asked the superintendent to do that. The school board agreed to have him look into language. At this point, no formal language has even been presented. The school board voted to wait um, until Mr. Poor, the superintendent, brought back a recommendation to wait right. until after the Supreme Court ruled on marriage equality. And so at this point, even though that has gone back and forth with the board a couple of times, they have voted to continue to wait until the Supreme Court ruling before they actually come up with some language. I don't understand why they're linking the two. You know, the Supreme Court could make a very broad ruling that could encompass um, 
housing and employment rights. Right. It, that's possible. I'm yeah. not sure how likely it is, but it is possible. Right. So it could change the climate of things that could be relevant to discussing that policy. It also, um, should the Supreme Court rule in favor of marriage equality, if, if one of the board members or two of the board members are kind of on the fence and thinking very politically, yeah. this could make it easier for them to vote in favor of equality. Right. Now, um, when, when this came up before the school board, there were quite a number of people who came who were just vehemently, vehemently opposed to it, weren't there? Yes, yes. There were quite a few people who were very much opposed to equality that came and spoke at the first April board meeting when it was not on the agenda. There was no language to present. Yep. There was nothing. They just came to um, quote their very specific religious beliefs mm -hmm. and um, speak against equality. And it right. was some of the most hateful speech I have ever heard in my life. It was like reading the comments on the world's worst internet article yeah. that anonymous people were saying. And yeah. here were these people saying it in public with their names attached, proud of themselves for that. It was shocking to me. Often these people don't seem to realize there are reporters in the room where their, their comments will get re reported on. I think that they are very much aware of that yeah. and they're proud of their stance. Maybe you're right, yeah. Because a lot of them do seem to, it's like, it's like people on reality shows go from reality show to reality show, a lot of these people seem to go from meeting to meeting, like from Bentonville to Fayetteville to wherever to voice their opinions. You know, I noticed that as well. It seems like the group of people who are against equality are going wherever people are trying to make things right. better and they are there to stop it. Whether they live there or not. Whether they live there or not. So that tells me that the group of people opposed is really very small. Yeah. And if you look at just the numbers on our Facebook groups, um, Citizens for Equality, my page has more than double the number of supporters than their page does. And their page, I think their page is what, Protect Our Children, Bentonville Public Schools, something like that? That's one of them, yeah. Yeah, and it, it seems to be, a, uh, they post a lot of stuff about anti-gay marriage and just, um, I think they post a new one about what gay marriage would do to the country. I, 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 I've been reading, now I've been reading them every day. So. <laughs> I'm sure they're glad to have your viewership. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, it, it seems to be one of those sites that's just built on fear. It does. You know, you look at what's being posted, and I think a lot of it is fear. Um, I think a lot of these people have probably never left Northwest Arkansas. I think a lot of these people have never met someone that they knew to be gay or transgender. Or maybe somebody who was gay would, would be afraid to tell them. Well, I think that is yeah. certainly true. If I was gay or transgender, I would certainly be afraid to talk to those people as well. Absolutely. Uh, now, there was an anti-discrimination rally several months ago what, put on yes. by the students. Yes, in May. Um, in May, there was a rally that the students held. Um, the students from Bentonville High School, it was three groups. It was the um, Young Dems, the Feminists, and then the GSA, which is the Gay Straight Alliance. Now, see, this, this, for, for a lot of people in Fayetteville, they don't think of Bentonville in those terms. I mean, and... Any of those terms, probably. No, 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 no they don't. And, and, and even progressives in Fayetteville, because there's a certain amount of, of snobbery, I think. When you just think of Bentonville, you just think of a place that's very conservative. I can see that. Um, living up there, as I do, um, I see it a little differently uh, because so many people are moving to Bentonville um, from all over the country uh, to work for Walmart or to be a yeah. vendor. You have a more cosmopolitan feeling there than you think. People are coming from all over and they're right. bringing their blue state ideals with them there. Yeah. Uh, they just might not be as vocal about it as they are here in Fayetteville. Well, soon ben it seems like soon Bentonville will be like Fayetteville. Yeah. <laughs> One can it, hope. It, it, but you know what? The, the, the kids, the children, the young people, they are much more progressive than their parents are. That often and, seems to be the case. Yes. Yes. And so as those, those kids start being able to organize and do things, I think you're going to uh -huh. see a, a lot more of that because right. they have, the students, they have, and millennials really in general, have very little tolerance for anything anti-gay. Yeah. You know, when I was, I was raised in the military uh, in the early 70s, and uh, we were all convinced that by the 21st century, all forms of uh, bigotry and uh, intolerance would be gone. So, but, you know, we were wrong. Yeah.
Yeah, well, you did see at least the U.S. military last week um, adding to their non-discrimination policy, including sexual orientation for the first time. That's true. So that was a big step. I mean, the U.S. military, home of don't ask, don't tell, yeah. more conservative than Bentonville, Arkansas, even. <laughs> Now, there was, there was a, a little brouhaha over this anti-discrimination rally, wasn't there, because of some of the pictures that were posted? There was a, there was a rally. Um, the students at Bentonville High School um, got together. It was the Young Dems, the Feminists, and the GSA, which right. is the Gay Straight Alliance. Um, they got together. It was completely student-led demonstration uh, across the street from the school. These kids, they did all of the work. They contacted all the right people. They set it up themselves. They were amazing to watch do this. And they had, the, and then there was the picture posted on Facebook. Yes, I shared a news article, which was basically the press release that the kids wrote. Yeah. And um, Brentley's wife, Brentley's is one of the school board yes, members. Yes, we'll talk, about, talk <laughs> more about him in a few minutes. Yeah. Yes, his wife shared a screenshot of my post. And a few hours later, school board member Rebecca Powers made a comment on it where she said that the young lady um, leading this demonstration was an atheist. Uh, the student's not an atheist. She went on to talk about how the student behaved at an event with Mary Beth Tinker, who, who's famous for a Supreme Court case involving free, right. free speech. She said that the student was rude and disrespectful and that she was reprimanded for her actions that day. In fact, her, her exact language was it was her displeasure to see her. Yes, yes, yes. And that is also untrue. The student was not reprimanded that day. But there were uh, there was a full auditorium for that event. And that auditorium holds about 1,100 people. So all of those people did see the student raise her hand and ask to have her question answered, which is all that the disruptive behavior was. Yeah. And so those 1,100 people could easily identify who Ms. Powers was talking about in her article. Um, and then to call her an atheist on top of that, which to Ms. Powers is fundamentalist Christian, is like the worst thing in the world you could ever call someone. There, there, is, a, there, is, a, there, is, a, there is a still small group of people, if you charge someone with being an atheist, it's like... It's like saying they're a devil worshiper. Right. And, and as I said, the student herself, she's not an atheist. She yeah. has a very deep faith. So that was a very hurtful comment to her personally. Um, and the student was just devastated to learn that, you know, a school board member was coming down on her and posting yeah. things in public. And then she withdrew her. the comment, didn't she? She, she, she did. It, yeah. um, she posted a few hours after Seth Neely's comment. And then sometime overnight, that comment was removed. It right. was taken down. Um, but then that evening after the student rally, I had taken a screenshot of it and I contacted the school board and the superintendent to let them know that this had happened. And in my letter, I did say we are very glad to see that this comment was taken down, but it should never have happened in the first place. It violates the code of ethics. This is yeah. it violates the school's bullying policy, really. Right. And um, within an hour after yeah. me sending that email to the school board, Rebecca Powers reposted her comment in the exact same place with the same words, but added a parenthetical phrase, basically accusing the students of not having led that demonstration, um, saying, you know, implying that there were some adults behind it who were actually outside agitators. Right. Right. And, and I'm the first to admit that I went to their planning meeting and answered some questions for them about what had been happening at school board meetings. Yeah. But they led that event. Right. And I stood back and watched and I was so impressed. These kids were organized. They were passionate. They were positive. They were uplifting each other and their peers and giving them the confidence and motivation to really make some change. I left that meeting thinking I had just seen the next president. Is it possible that some people just they look at things like this and they just can't imagine young people feeling this way? I, I don't know. I can't speak for what they imagine yeah. or not. I wish they could have a chance to sit down with them and realize how impressive yeah. the students within our school district really are. These are the kids that they should be holding up a sign and saying, look at the success that we have. We've done great with these kids. It, it often seems to me that people like that, or, or even in the Protect Our Children BPS, people like that don't actually respect the young people they're supposed to be protecting. It certainly would seem that way. I mean, if you're posting disparaging comments about students on public social media, it's doing like, it twice. It's almost like they, they're thinking, well, like, these kids don't have minds of their own. And so, you know, we have to we have to fill them with something, you know, because they're they're susceptible to all this evil. 
stuff that's out there. I, I really, I can't, I have a very hard time putting myself in their place. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's very difficult to me to figure that out, especially having seen them for myself. Yeah, I know, I just know there's a lot of anger on their Facebook page. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I can imagine that. Yeah. Now, <laughs> now, I, about how many members are there on your, in your Facebook group? Um, Bentonville Public Schools Citizens for Equality had 652 at last check. So, and how would you characterize the comments on your page? On our page, well, you know, we um, we let most comments stand. Yeah. So, if you come to our page and you disagree, then um, we are happy to engage in a civil debate and yeah. provide facts. Yeah. And our 652 uh, supporters are also more than willing to jump in there and provide facts and links and articles. Yeah. Um, but if you start posting hateful comments and per, of a personal nature, we do tend to take those down. Yeah. Um, but mostly our, our philosophy is um, if you're going to come to our page and you're going to write things that are ignorant, we're going to let the world see those things. <laughs> yeah. Now, I, I've seen letters to the editor. One, one person wrote about God's biblical plan of sexuality when he's talking about the uh, the scoreboard policy, which sort of blew my mind. You know, There's so, so. much wrong with that. I mean, first of all, this is public school. So one person's definition of God, one person's holy book should not have any impact at all on the policy of public school. I mean, that's that's what that means, right? If you're you have to be open to all. And right. so there is none. So it, one person's narrow vision and their re religious point of view should not have any impact on right. the written policy of the public school district, which is secular by definition. And then the other part of that is God's law of sexuality. Well, why does that's one of the things that tends to keep coming up is all of this um, in depth about what people do in their bedrooms. We're not talking about they what people do in their bedrooms. We're talking about what people do in the classroom. They can't, they can't, I, I know. I read, I read some just nonsensical things like, like a teacher explaining that she got married to, to another woman over Christmas break. I was like, what? You know, no? you, have, um, you have teachers every day who do nothing more than live their lives. Yeah. And at one of the board meetings, I gave this example. Um, my daughter was in kindergarten this year, and she had a wonderful teacher. She learned so much. I have a lot of respect for her teacher. At the beginning of the school year, before school even started, we got a letter from my daughter's teacher in the mail, and it said, my name is Mrs. Blah, 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 and my husband's name is Mr. Blah, 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 and I have two children, and one of them's in kindergarten with you as well, and their names are this and this, and here's a little bit about me. I'm looking forward to meeting you. That letter could not have been sent to me if my teacher, my daughter's teacher, was gay. Yeah. So that's the problem, is yeah. that you have this double standard where straight teachers have more rights than gay teachers do. If you were a gay teacher, you could not have a picture of your spouse on your desk. We're not talking about standing up in front of a classroom and showing a slideshow of what happened in your bedroom. We're talking about living your life. No, we're talking about special rights here. Special rights? Special rights. Special rights. Special well, it's special definitely rights. not equal. Nobody's quite, nobody's quite able to, to tell, to explain adequately what special rights are. Well, you know, I keep hearing that. I keep hearing that's this, this in fact, I, I heard a, a guidance counselor yeah. at one of the schools say that rights for LGBT people were, she deemed them ridiculous and special, which from a guidance counselor to school is just very wrong. Um, but when I think of special rights, I think, of someone who has more rights than someone else. And if you look at this situation, I have more rights than our gay employees do or our transgender employees do. And that's not fair. No. I can go to the movies with my husband. I can go on a date with my husband. And if I run into a coworker or a parent or another student, my husband doesn't have to go run and hide. And those are real life examples that I have heard from gay teachers. They say, if I am on the Bentonville Square at the farmer's market and I see a parent or a student or a coworker, my spouse runs and hides. Yeah. You, that, could, you could kiss your husband at McDonald's. I, no one would bat an eye. That's right. Yeah. And that's a special right. right. I have special rights and that's not fair. Right.
There is no reason that I should have any more rights than anyone else. Regardless yeah. of how wonderful and amazing my husband is, that's the only special right I need is that yeah. I get to live my life with him. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> nobody, no, really, nobody can really adequately explain what a special right is. No. Except they're very angry about them. Yes. I mean, they're really, really, <laughs> angry. they're really angry about special rights, you know. Um, now, getting down to uh, some more specifics. There was a school board meeting last week. There was a school board, yes. And, June fifteenth. Uh, yes. How would you describe the latest school board meeting? Um, well, it was more of the same. The public comments um, were from both sides. Yeah. Um, although the the public comments from the opposition this time seemed to focus on bullying, as if there's just a rash of bullying of straight white Christian people going oh, on. Oh, so, so I, I can sense what side the comments were coming from about bullying. So, um, and you know, bullying of all kinds is wrong. It's exactly. absolutely wrong. And the school has a bullying policy that lists all of the things right. that are not allowed. And religion and race, they're all in there. Right. Sexual orientation, gender identity are also included in yeah. there. And that's by state law. So we heard all of these public comments talking about bullying. And then at the end of the meeting, in the section where the school board uh, members get to make their own comments, uh, Mr. Brent Lees, read a letter that he himself authored. And in that letter, he formally requested that the school's bullying policy be put on the agenda for the July meeting for review. His reasoning was that there's an inconsistency within the district's policies in that the bullying policy includes all of these attributes, including sexual orientation and gender identity, but the employment policy does not, the non-discrimination equal opportunity employment policy does not include sexual orientation or gender identity. So his solution to fix that yeah. was instead of bringing the EEO policy up to speed, his solution was to remove all of those attributes from the bullying policy. In his letter, he asked that the bullying policy either read only no bullying, period, or that the district adopt a bullying policy that is authored by the anti-gay group, the Liberty Council. The Liberty Council, the Liberty Council, yeah. Yes. Um, is Mr. Lee aware that, that, that if he, Bentonville schools were to adopt his, his uh, clever idea, that they might be in violation of state law? Well, uh, Mr. Grant Lytle, school board member, uh, informed him of that, and he, he asked him, like, that would be in violation of the law. That's why we updated the policy to begin with. And what was his response? We'll just have to talk about that in July. <laughs> well, so uh, before we talk about Liberty Council, um, how are some of the, the these... Uh, and I'm, I, 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 don't, I don't want to bash people in faith, but how, how are young religious people being bullied? I don't know. See, that, that's, that's the new paranoia, you know, in this country. You know? mm -hmm. I mean, if it's not shingles, it's, it's uh, young religious people being bullied, I guess because they can't stand up on the square and say homosexuals should be put to death. I don't know. They can stand up on the square and stand on their soapbox and say pretty much whatever they want so long right. as they're not threatening someone. Yeah. I yeah. mean, having having an unpopular opinion is not a crime. Right. There's, I mean, there's been no, I, I've, never, I've never seen any verifiable evidence that, that these young people have been bullied because of their beliefs. Yeah. So the Liberty Council, uh, I looked that up. That's um, not exactly what you call an even-handed group. No, they're a religious-based anti-gay group, and they have come out against hate crimes legislation, of all things. Right. I mean, anything where people are trying to make any kind of progress, they're there to try and prevent it. Um, they're some of the authors of this religious freedom acts and that sort of thing. Um, they're, they're not someone that needs to be writing policies for public school, that's for sure. They're also, they also want to impeach President Obama because he's a self-appointed dictator. Oh. Uh, they want uh, him impeached over Benghazi. They want the internet um, to be free so that corporations can control the internet. Um, they, uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff that the Liberty Council uh, wants you to follow along their line of reasoning with. Yeah. And they want money, of course. Of course. 
but uh, yeah, I just uh, everything everything seems to be a threat. There, there are another, another group that, that that seems to be spreading fear. There seems to be a lot of that, and that does seem to make people think we have to fight everywhere we go. Yeah, and I do wish people could open their eyes and maybe look for a news source outside of that genre. I mean, just 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 maybe CNN. That's all I'm asking. Like, look for a, a non-biased news source yeah. when you're looking for your facts. That's one of the things that our group um, really prides itself on, is that much as I, I personally might love Rachel Maddow, I'm not using her as a source. Um, I'm looking for nonpartisan sources. I'm looking for scientific studies. I'm looking for facts that yeah. prove my point. And fortunately for us, we have a lot of them. <laughs> yeah, and, and there are. I mean, unfortunately, we live in a world in which and I, and I read this horrible study where a lot of people actually do seem to be getting most of their news from Facebook, which is one of the scariest thoughts for our civilization. As long as they're imagine. getting it from me, I'm okay with it. <laughs> oh, well, well, yeah, of course. But I mean, it's, it's one of the most, it's like one of the worst, that, like, I think the dinosaurs are probably getting their news from Facebook. That's, that's, why, <laughs> that's why they became extinct. But um, it's, people do seem to read only what's in their little group and they don't they don't look anything outside the group mm -hmm. like there's liberal news conservative news world net daily the breitbart report right you know, well it like does that. tend to raise your blood pressure when yeah. you start when you start reading what the other guys are saying yeah. it does tend to to raise your blood pressure and part of that is because half the time what the the very polarized articles are saying is they're written in a very inflammatory way and they and they they, they want people to be angry so people mm -hmm. are angry when they go to these meetings. Oh yes. Because they see enemies. They don't see individuals. They don't see people who are concerned about things. They don't see neighbors. They see outside agitators. Right. They, they see the enemies of the state. They see traitors to America. Mm -hmm. They want well, their country back. You know, and I really feel like everyone is just trying to do what they think is right. Yeah. Um, I happen to disagree with this particular group on what is the right um, decision for our school district. Um, because I look at as I look at at it as it's those are basic human right. civil rights that we need to extend to everyone. Yeah. Um, and they don't see it that way. I know. Uh, we hear a lot though about well, we just disagree. We don't hate you. We just disagree with you. And I really do kind of take issue with that. Yeah. And I know I know y'all heard it a lot um, at the Fayetteville debates on uh, last week too. Oh, starting in 1999, <laughs> the Dignity Resolution. Yeah. I mean, I know that that's just something that's very common. Well, we don't hate you. We just don't want you to have the same rights as us. Yeah. Well, to me, that's that's hate. We don't we don't want you to have those special rights. Well, that I already enjoy. Yeah. So to me, that's that is a difference. Like if you and I have a conversation and you say the dress is white and gold and I say the dress is blue and black, we can disagree. Right. But if I say the dress is blue and black and then I call you names and I call your husband an it. Right. Right. If I if I called your spouse an it and yeah. dehumanized them like that, if I then um, tried to keep you from having the same rights that I enjoy every day of my life, no yeah. problem. There's a difference there. Exactly. We no longer just disagree about the color of the dress. Exactly. Now there's animus there and there's yeah. hate and there's actually trying to prevent you from enjoying your life. Well, you're trying to get me, keep me from having a job. Trying to keep me from having a job, trying to get you to lose your job right. simply for being yourself. Yeah. That, or, or simply for thinking that the dress is white and gold. I mean, right. this is, this is it a difference. It seems to be the kind of culture we're living in now. Uh, now, now your group is also you, you. You're linked with other groups too. You work with other groups too, don't you? Um, we communicate with other groups that's, certainly. That's what I meant, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I think that um, one of the wonderful things that this has done um, is start bringing people together. So we have been able to join uh, and help build a community of support for equality throughout the state of Arkansas. Right. And um, thanks to Miss Powers, the um, atheists are um, riled up about this as well. And so we've started being able to build a, a community with them because there are hundreds of atheists right. in Northwest Arkansas and in the Bentonville School District. And when she used atheist as if it was some kind of derogatory bad word, well, that was, that was very offensive. And so we've picked up coverage from national media like the friendly atheist, right. Hemnet Manta, who's on CNN. He covered our story. And after he covered our story, Richard Dawkins, 
picked up our story and shared that with millions of people. So what this has done is just really build a community, um, strengthen a community, uh, and help us um, make connections to support one another. So we've reached out to the Northwest Arkansas Equality Center. We're going to be marching in the Pride Parade. We've been um, helping spread the word about Fort Fayetteville and where people can donate to that cause. We've been working with Arkansans for equality. And what she does too, when, when people hurt like her make comments like that, um, because the majority of Christians are not angry people, sure. snide people, she makes them look bad. She does. She does. And, you know, I really feel like most of the Christians in our area don't agree with that either. And I don't believe they do. The people that I'm speaking to have come up to me and say, well, you know, we really don't think this is right. I, I've had all kinds of parents in the district come up and say, you know what, we're Christians. But there is a separation of church and state right. for a reason. Yeah. And we are entitled to our faith and they're entitled to their faith. But yeah. none of us are entitled to impose that on the public school district. Right. And that's what they're trying to do by imposing their religious belief on the employment policy of a public secular mm -hmm. school district. Exactly. So what does the future hold for your group? You know, I think uh, once we win this, because yeah. we are in it to win it, yeah. um, that we will continue to strengthen those relationships um, and work wherever we can to um, further the cause of equality. You know, Bentonville does not have a city ordinance. I think maybe they should. Yeah. Well, it, I mean, a few years ago, one, would, one, one, one might have laughed if you suggested that. But it seems like Bentonville is changing a great deal. And we're going to help it change. You know, Bentonville <laughs> needs public access and a, and a government channel, too. You know? <laughs> And that would help. That would help a great deal. Well, I'd be like the this. first to sign up. <laughs> I mean, every every political struggle in Fayetteville over the last 30 years has used public access very well. Wow. And I really think you all need public access. But anyway, I think you're doing a hell of a good job. Thank you. So, thank you very much. I wish you the best of luck. Thank you. So, thank you for having me. All right. Thanks for being on the show. And uh, thank you for watching. And we'll see you next week. Hi, this day is Amy Gillespie from the Fayetteville. That's it. We're out. We're gone for the day. All right, let's let's bring it. Let's do it again. Do the yoga and I want you to go to Facebook and make action television. Preventing wildfires. That's all Smokey wants for his 70th birthday. We'll want to remember this night forever. Let's make sure it's not for the wrong reasons. If you're underage, just drinking is a crime, and drinking and driving is a whole lot worse. Right now, Arkansas law enforcement is out all over the state with extra sobriety checkpoints for people of all ages, anytime, anywhere. Don't end the big night or any night in here. Underage drinking, zero tolerance. Hi, I want to tell you about the time that my wife Tracy and I decided to put a vegetable garden in. We put about half our yard in as a vegetable garden in a couple years ago, and it was doing pretty well. We had all kinds of things they called, I guess they called them vegetables. I don't know, because none of them ever reached fruition. Because our neighbor next door had this big thing, um, you spell it G-N-U, I guess it's pronounced new, but he called it a GNU. And uh, this silly thing kept coming over and chewing on our vegetables, our cabbages, our cauliflowers, our peas on a regular basis. And they never, they never grew. I mean, they, they, they never just, it was like, a, like 
vegetable abortions because they, they, they we, we were never able to, f to find out what they tasted like on our plates because this, this stupid animal from next door kept coming over and, and helping himself. So I kept going over, I kept knocking on the man's door. I said, listen, Mr. Green Jeans, I said, you got to do something about this stupid uh, animal of yours. I said, it's, it's coming over and it's, it's, it's eating, it's eating all of our vegetables. I said, we can't have this. I said, my wife and I are going to go hungry. I said, we're just, we're too, uh, we're, we're getting on in years. I said, we're supposed to grow our own food. I said, we read Utney Magazine. I said, we're supposed to just be one with nature. He said, ah, oh, I'm really sorry about this. He said, I'm, I'm trying to get back to nature myself. I'm, I'm raising all these gnus. That's how he pronounced it, gnu. Um, he said, um, I, and the Harvey, 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 my, my, my eldest gnu, keeps getting out. He said, uh, tell you what, if Harvey gets out again, just, just look him in the eyes and say, Harvey, go back home, and he'll do it. I said, all right. So Harvey the gnu came back to our garden. I, I looked him in the eyes and grabbed him by the collar. I said, Harvey, get out of here. And, and Harvey went, went home, but he was back the next day, just chomping down on, on my, my favorite cauliflower, the one that was like, it was like as big as a man's head. I was ready to, to, to make soup out of that one. And uh, I said to him, I said, man, I said, Mr. Green Jeans, I just, I'm tired of this, this, this creature coming over and chomping on our vegetables. He said, all right. He said, uh, listen, if it comes over again, he said, just throw some pebbles at it. I said, all right. So the next morning I saw this gnu uh, chomping on vegetables, so I picked up some small pebbles, because I don't want to throw rocks at this thing, because it's one of God's creatures after all. So I picked up some small pebbles and tossed the pebbles at the gnu, and it scattered like a wild stallion, ran next door. Uh, did that the next day, but it looked at me like I was the biggest idiot on God's green earth. So I marched over, and, and I, I started kicking on the man's door. I said, listen, I'm tired of this. I said, you're going to do something about this gnu, or it's going to the glue factory. He said, all right. And he gave me this. He gave me this. He said, he said, listen, he said, if Harvey comes over there again, he said, you need to give him a couple of good whacks. Just paddle, paddle him on the butt. I said, all right, by God. I said, I'm ready for this because I'm tired of this creature eating our produce. So the next day I was ready and I walked outside and there is this big animal just chomping down our vegetables. And I walked over to him and I raised my big old stick and I looked at those big, gentle, stupid brown eyes, and I couldn't do it. And I walked over to Mr. Green Jean's house, and I gave him back a stick, and I said, listen, I said, paddle your own GNU. You may have wondered, since we don't have the magenta hair, and <laughs> we're probably between average age would be like about to 42 here. Why do we call ourselves the Neon Girls? Right? We have a friend back in Kansas City who uh, is a graphic artist, and she has an entire body of art devoted to exploring the personality of Neon Girl. And I see Neon Girl as Karen's alter ego. She sends Neon Girl out to do the things um, that Karen perceives hard, difficult, challenging, scary, or just distasteful. Neon Girl can do it. She, uh, she's not afraid of success. She takes failure in stride. And we hold her as our role model. Because what we do up here can be scary, challenging, difficult. Um, and Karen was kind enough to share Neon Girl with us, and in fact did all of the artwork for both recordings. And you're, gonna, you're never going to see a nicer looking cassette or a CD, I don't believe. This is a lovely piece of art. You could just put it on the wall. So, Christy uh, wrote this song about the young girl.
it, like if you bump into someone and they say, oh, you're a poet, and is there any poem you really have that you say, well, yes, look at this? Oh, well, let's see. Well, there's one right here. What a coincidence. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And in fact, that, that happened to, to me uh, uh, at one of the coffee shops a few months ago, a woman I hadn't seen for 20 years and ran into her. And this is like that moment on Tonight Show when, when the band just happens to have the music that the guests can sing. <laughs> yeah, and I, I didn't know what was happening in this woman's life. But she said, what are you doing? And I said, I write poetry. And I read her this. And she said, she said that's, that's wonderful. That's about what's happening in my life. And it's, a, um, it's called Silence to Facilitate Programming. We live ready to die when we are most alive. Laughing from the inside out filters our toxins, what we live for, die from, things which follow each breath. We always fear the numbness which chases us, whispering, repent, come, live with me. At the end of side one, we hear silence to facilitate programming. If we ever thought in this, what would happen? Some new outlook might emerge for each unafraid, some young phoenix, ready to swear off our curses, ready to take on the world, and even us. Like Jan said, this is the first time Peggy and I have ever performed together. We've been mm -hmm. friends for a long time and have gotten into all kinds of trouble together. Yeah. <laughs> and so when we heard that Jan told us about the festival, we thought, gosh, this is a great excuse for us to try to do something together. So this is just really special. And um, this next song, um, Peggy does, does teach creativity classes. Um, we were both doing the Artist Way book uh, a while back ago, and it was so funny. She, she came up to me and she said, she goes, I just had this blocked week, no creativity, I just can't do anything. Totally and dead. It just, you know, just nothing. So she said, I got my guitar, and I went in the bedroom because I was so frustrated. And she wrote this incredible song called The Artist's Block. And boy, is it whiny, too. <laughs>
The Fayetteville Chamber of Commerce, in an effort to capitalize on Bill Clinton's presidency and the expected influx of tourists to our area, has announced a contest to find the perfect Fayetteville folk song, which will make its debut on national television. All entries must tout our environment, our laid-back way of life, and of course, the joys of working for low wages in a union-free environment. A spokesperson for the chamber suggested that something in the vein of Woody Guthrie would be preferred, though of course, anything easily mastered by a high school marching band is also encouraged. Um, October is a month to, um, for us to all think about domestic violence. And in Kansas City, there's been a number of things going on. We participated in a Take Back the Night March. Um, at all of these events, and if you go to the legislature, if you look in the newspaper, the way we deal with a lot of the domestic violence in, when we talk about it is by looking at statistics. And I want to share just a few statistics with you, even though many of you have probably already heard most of them. Um, every 15 seconds, a woman is battered in this country. 60% um, of all the young boys that grow up in violent homes and hate their father for what he does will eventually grow up and become their father. 50% of all young girls growing up in violent homes will become adult victims. Um, there are many, many statistics, and I think statistics are a powerful way of reminding ourselves how prevalent it is, and um, certainly we're not alone. Um, but they're also a little bit dangerous when people rely on them um, to talk about it, because in some ways you can use numbers to forget who's really being affected. A woman from Lawrence, Kansas, named Rachel Miller wrote this next song. It's called Mathematics, and it looks at the phenomenon of using statistics in such a way. <coughs> One in three. It was hypnotizing me into submission. 
with its 30 minute quick fix answer on some sitcom reality where canned laughter rolls off of hatred, rising from an idiot one line. Where $20,000 luxury car ad defecates, or you gotta have, buy now deal on the porch of my mind. Where tongues of flapping tongues interview every redneck hillbilly below the Mason Dixon line about their incestuous, drug taking, beer drinking, bar brawling, dog kicking, wife cheating, husband beating. I don't know how to get it on live. Where Big Brother shows his face in the form of a third rate actor in a movie called You Knock Them, We Bust Them form of desensitized entertainment. Where fresh air, rolling beaches, cloud-piercing mountain, hair-thick forests come to me through a 19-inch light line. So yes, I did it. And I'm glad I did it. And I'll do it again. Because I'm finally free. Free, I say. I'm going to move up to Montana and rent the Unabomber's cabin. I'm going to wash my hands free of modern society. Except, but well, I'm gonna I'm gonna need to bring my computer. You see, listen, using a typewriter is barbaric, let alone freehand. That's slipping into the dark ages. And I'll I'll need my phone because, well, for internet access, I gotta have email. And I'm gonna actually need to keep my microwave because the only thing I've ever learned to cook on a stove is to boil some water. And I'm definitely keeping my $9,000 receiver, tape deck, CD player, and speakers, because I gotta have my tunes. Man. But I'm free! Do you hear? Free, damn it! Free! Thank you. Preventing wildfires. That's all Smokey wants for his 70th birthday. We'll want to remember this night forever. Let's make sure it's not for the wrong reasons. If you're underage, just drinking is a crime, and drinking and driving is a whole lot worse. Right now, Arkansas law enforcement is out all over the state with extra sobriety checkpoints for people of all ages, anytime, anywhere. Don't end the big night or any night in here. Underage drinking. Zero tolerance. Politics in general and jobs that don't pay enough 40 hour work weeks. Books full of boring stuff, schools that should teach, but kids don't learn a thing. These are a few of my least favorite things. Health care that won't heal and how people treat the earth. Paying tolls and taxes. Disbelief in self-worth. Bitter cold winters that cut into spring. These are a few of my least favorite things. Religions that claim they're true. Don't get me started. Standards that double and people cold-hearted. Judgment and bias when freedom don't ring. These are a few of my least favorite things. killing when I'm depressed and sad. I add that to all of my least favorite things and then I feel really bad. <laughs> I feel like Julie Andrews or something. 